This is Volkswagen T-Cross. Yes, I already reviewed one a year ago, but this is the more powerful version. Is the extra 35 horsepower worth two grand? Let's find out. What a dumb question, of course it is, but having fresh memories of the Renault Captur, Nissan Juke or Skoda Kamek, I should be asking whether this small crossover is worth 33,000 euro. And don't run away screaming just yet, don't turn off the video, let me tell you about the T-Cross and then you can write me a comment, I know nothing about cars. What is the T-Cross? It's a small B crossover. How small? noticeably smaller than the Captur, Juke or the Kamek. The T-Cross is more than 10 cm shorter and has almost 10 cm shorter wheelbase than any of them. That's bad, right? Well, yes and no. If you like to sit higher than in a hatchback, you like compact dimensions and you don't need 400 plus liters boot space all the time, then this could be something for you. The back seat slides, allowing you to choose between boot space and rear legroom. But now I'd like to focus on dynamics, because this is what I complained about during the launch event in the spring of 2019. At launch, the T-Cross was available only with a 1.0-liter 3-banger with 95 horsepower or 115 horsepower, and even the more powerful engine was good mainly for pottering around the city. Because the 1.0-liter T-Cross weighs 1,270 kilograms with the driver, more than the Skoda Kamek, but less than the Renault Captur and Nissan Juke. This sort of explains why the 130 horsepower Captur felt okay, but the 117 horsepower Juke felt like the handbrake was on all the time. Anyway, the 150 horsepower engine makes the T-Cross more versatile and you can set off for longer journeys without having to worry about overtaking a lorry. Accidental rhyme. The 150 horsepower T-Cross is available only with a DSG or double clutch transmission. Even in normal mode, it reacts instantly to the gas pedal. It no longer feels muted like the Mark 7 facelifted Golf I tested a few years ago, where the 1.5 TSI engine was first implemented. There are two possibilities. Either VW engineers did some magic with the software. <coughs> and the engine got some oomph, or during the last few years everyone has castrated their engine so much that now switching from a more powerful car, at least on paper, the T-Cross feels almost like a sports car. Only it doesn't, because high center of gravity and 1330 kilograms with the driver, probably much more with me on board, um, and all this means that the T-Cross isn't exactly good around the corners and when you brake it feels like a much bigger heavier SUV. So keep your racing aspirations at bay and keep those horsepowers just for overtaking. Fuel economy, that's around 8 liters per 100 kilometers in the city, around 6 in extra urban cycle. According to VW, the car should be slightly more efficient out on the open road, but the difference is negligible. Visibility is good, soundproofing is average, driving position is comfortable, although I would like the lumbar support adjustment to offer a bit more, you know, adjustment. You can order the T-Cross with the rear and front parking sensors, regardless of the trim. Parking camera is available on top trim only. As standard, you get front collision warning with pedestrian detection and emergency city braking, lane departure warning, blind spot monitoring, hill start assist, and reversing cross-traffic alert. On top trim, you even get active cruise control with stop and start functionality.
All these systems are neither new or unique in this segment. Renault and Nissan even offer a 360 camera, which you can't have in smaller VWs. However, as far as driver aids are concerned, Volkswagen is the best here because they're easy to use and they work. And they work with the driver, not against the driver, making slight adjustments as needed rather than intervening abruptly at the last moment. Regardless of the engine variant and trim level, the VW T-Cross doesn't have all-wheel drive. However, should you feel adventurous, VW says the car has 16.6 .6 degrees approach angle, 18.5 degrees departure angle and 14 degrees breakover angle. There is no information about ground clearance though. The T-Cross interior is well laid out, practical. There are large door pockets, medium-sized glove box, small storage under the armrest. There are two cup holders, a smartphone cubby, and why do I have to sacrifice one of the USB ports for a modem to get traffic information for my sat-nav? I get the feeling when the T-Cross was still at the design stage, nobody assumed it would need advanced connectivity. I wish they added a USB port somewhere in the glove box where I wouldn't have to look at it. Since I have to sacrifice one of the USB ports anyway, I can just as well get Apple CarPlay and Android Auto with AppConnect and skip the Discover Media satnav altogether. Speaking of the infotainment system, the traffic sign information is displayed only on the central display, not on the virtual instrument cluster where I would expect it. Since VW is pushing the active info display, I wish it also actively provided necessary information in it, rather than let me have four display themes. Renault and Nissan somehow managed, and not long ago their infotainment systems were less useful than paper maps. There is a surprising amount of room in the back, and that's with the seat all the way back. Slide it forward and there is virtually no legroom but at least you get two USB ports and large door pockets. The boot lid is surprisingly heavy and you have to lift it at least halfway before the struts take over. Boot volume is 385 liters with the seats all the way back and 455 liters with the seats all the way in the front. But even the 385 liters is including the underfloor storage. And if you select the Beats audio system, like in this car, the subwoofer prevents you from dropping the floor lower. I suggest you save 500 euro for some shopping, which you can then hang on one of the two shopping bag hooks. Fold the backrests, which by the way are spring-loaded, and you get almost 1300 liters of cargo space. Also, the front passenger seat folds and you can carry objects up to 240 centimeters long. Prices of the Volkswagen T-Cross start at €18,700 for the 5-speed manual with a 1.0-litre 95-horsepower motor. There is also a diesel version in some markets and, of course, the 1.5-litre TSI with DSG we have here. With options, it costs €33,000, which is a lot by any standard, and more than the larger competition. Save a grand or two by dropping the SatNav and the Beats Audio from the options list. They're not worth it. Yes, the T-Cross is expensive. Yes, it is small. No, it's not the best value for money. You can get more for less or even something more visually appealing, although I like the boxy shape of the T-Cross. And which one of the small crossovers do you like best? The T-Cross, the Captur, the Juke, the Kamek, or maybe something else? Let me know in the comment section below. If you like my sarcastic, down-to-earth and possibly mildly amusing car reviews, subscribe and join me every Friday or just click one of the links you see on the screen right now. Also, I started a new channel about the gear I use for filming my shoestring budget car reviews, so feel free to check it out as well. Thanks for watching and I will see you in the next one.